So I officially have a bachelor's degree. decorate my grad cap. So here's how I made this. Now, you might be thinking, that's cool and all, but it looks nothing like the thumbnail. Well, the version on the screen right now is actually version 3, and the thumbnail features version 1. So here's what went wrong. The idea was to put a pen plotter on my head because, honestly, why not? How cool would it have been to convocate with a functional robot on my head? And we all know how long and boring some ceremonies can get. So imagine how much more interesting it would be to watch a pen plotter for an hour instead. I started with a cardboard prototype to help me visualize the size of the assembly and better imagine the parts I would need to 3D model. I took this as an opportunity to learn Onshape, a browser-based CAD. Moving along, I slowly began to realize there were several issues with my design ideas for this cap, which inevitably threw a wrench into this project. The first minor issue was power. The pen plotter electronics included the following components, which I was lucky to have on hand already. I did salvage the limit switches from an old 3D printer I gutted previously. I had purchased a power bank, and through a quick calculation, the bank should have given several hours of runtime. The biggest challenge would have been the placement of the power bank itself. It would be too heavy to wear directly on the cap, so I figured I could keep it in my pocket and have an extra long USB cable that I'd managed to hide under my gown somehow. The second larger issue was my assembly. Some of the 3D printed parts needed a few versions to get the fit just right. Also, using wooden skewers for the straight rods was an awful idea. Even after sanding them, there was just too much friction between the skewer and the resin printed parts, which gave the stepper motors a hard time with the X and Y movement. Oh, and of course, this was a problem too. I was hoping the controls would be as easy as downloading a G-code sender and loading Gerbil onto an Arduino, but nope. Actually, there's a custom flavor of Gerbil specifically for the 28 BYJ48 stepper motors and 9 gram Arduino servo motor combo I was trying to use. Unfortunately, the current version of this available for download on GitHub had a line commented out that should not have been commented out, and I wouldn't have figured that out if I hadn't stumbled across a video by the Chronic Megatronic on YouTube. Oh, and remember the G-code sender? Yeah, I think I would have needed to carry around my laptop to actually send the G-code to the Arduino and have it run. The sender sends it line by line, so the Arduino would need to stay connected to the laptop, not only for serial communication, but for power as well from the USB port. I could have reconfigured my old Android phone or tablet to do this, but I didn't have a USB on the go device, nor the means to make one in the moment. Of course, these control issues were something I figured out the night before graduation, which brings me to my fourth issue time. Yeah, long story short, I ran out of time, and this was just not going to work in the few hours I had left, so I completely scratched the pen plotter idea but still wanted to decorate my cap. My version 2 was probably the simplest thing I've ever came up with, and um, yeah, that made me hate it. Version 3 was a spin-off of version 2. We ended up with this, a future engineer cap that highly resembles the I Spy books that I used to love as a kid, so we'll run with that. Every little doodad on this cap has a meaning, symbolizing some kind of event or experience that was influential during my undergrad years. The gripper and print and place hinge play homage to my undergrad research. I had to add the first robotics logo since high school robotics heavily influenced my choice to pursue engineering and I enjoy volunteering at events when I can. The rubber duck is because I got a minor in computer science. These small gears are a shout out to my first DIY gearbox I made trying to increase the torque on a stepper motor for a gripper project. Don't laugh, it's really poorly made. This is about the time I really started trying to make mechanical things. I can't even tell you the gear ratio since I lost the gear that went directly on the stepper motor, not sure of the starting tooth count. The Team 8 pin and future engineer text are a nod to my final year capstone project. Actually, the text was cut out of the draft version of our circuit schematic. The electronic components are just because I studied electrical engineering and the little terminal lug is in reference to the tool change printer you've probably seen on my channel, which is a long story for another time but basically a lesson to trust myself more and a little 3d printed me because why not it's also my old youtube logo this video is also kind of to show you guys you should decorate your grad caps no one else at my convocation did and i don't really think people in canada actually do this decorating your grad cap is honestly 
so much fun. It's also a great way to kind of like express yourself while convocating, stand out in the crowd, and it's a piece of art afterwards. This is something I definitely hang up on the wall. I actually will do that. I bought a frame for it. <laughs> One of the main points of inspiration for this idea was Stephen Hawes' video of him decorating his cap like many years ago. Sorry Stephen, not calling you old. He did this live Twitter feed cap where he had this little screen in Raspberry Pi electronics and people could tweet to the hashtag that he made up and any of the graduation wishes people would send him would show up on his cap. One of my favorite clips of that video is him just sitting in the crowd with like a keyboard and mouse in his lap. To anybody who ends up putting a pen plotter on their grad cap, tag me. I want to see that success. You know what? If I gave myself another week, I would have had it. I would have had it. But I still like how, how my cap turned out. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> It says future engineer and not just engineer because in Canada, graduating a four-year bachelor's program in engineering doesn't officially make you an engineer. In Canada, only those licensed by a provincial or territorial engineering regulator may practice engineering and refer to themselves as an engineer. The exclusive use of this title by licensed engineers helps assure the public that only qualified individuals are practicing in the profession. You actually have to get professionally licensed, so that might mean taking a law and ethics exam and then working four years under a professional engineer and then applying to be a professional through a thick application. So yeah, future engineer, give me four years.